So, this is a new series that I wanted to launch, which I thought was really important because um, I love sales. I've been in sales for a long period of time, um, but it's so important that we actually get to hear and I get to share with you guys the knowledge and expertise from other people that have been in sales and have had incredible sales results. And um, one of the things that's always inspired me is the man that got me into sales. And you might wonder who that was. Well, it's my great father alongside me. So, Dad, hello, how are you? I'm superb, Jim. On a lovely day, I couldn't be anything else. So, this session is all going to be about sales. I'm having, and I'm having it in the car because I thought it was something different because salespeople are always in the car. Um, a lot of salespeople spend a lot of time in the car visiting clients. I know when I was younger, um, you, Dad, you spent huge amounts of time in the car. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use it as an example to, to drive around. I'm, I'm not, I'm going to let you do the talking. We're just talking. The GoPro's running. It's doing its thing. And it's all about just understanding a little bit more about what went on in sales, how you got into sales, some of the secrets and successes and things you had. And then at the end, I'm going to talk through four things that you always taught me that I believe are so important that I help my clients and the people that want to get better at sales results with. So, got, how, did you, how, long you, how long were you in sales for, Dad? How long did you get into sales for? I was in sales 20 odd years uh, in the end. It was a very, very interesting 20 years. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, I know you did. And I know when we moved to, 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 to Western, to Somerset, um, I was probably six or seven. I know you were in sales. And what year? What year was that roughly? Am I talking late seventies, early eighties? You yeah, started in sales. Eighty-two. Eighty-two. Wow. Okay. And what? What was your first job as a salesperson? And what was your first role from a sales perspective? Well, my area wasn't particularly big, uh, and sales was new to me. So I, how shall I say, I looked at it from strange angles to begin with. But some of the first jobs I had were interesting because they were dealing with people's problems and I thought to myself well this is not too bad people have problems all I can do is try and help solve them and we're going to come back to that because that's a really great I love the fact that you've already brought up one of the key reasons I talk to people in all the videos and the work that I do I always say to people that you know you have to have a problem or one but I want to come back to that actually after okay. if we can but but so what, so what prompted you, so where, how did you get into sales back then? Were you offered the job? Was it a case of you just yeah. thought, um, this is, and, and were you given any training when you started? How did that all transpire? I was an engineer. I was an engineer for many years. And one day my boss came to me and said, we need more sales. I said, I understand that. He said, would you like to try a, a new selling role? And what did you think when he said, so it's great that your boss says, you know, I need more sales. And that's the thing I hear a lot of people want more sales. What did you think? What did you say? I said, well, yeah, it sounds interesting. I've watched uh, salespeople come and go and it sounds interesting. I like to have a go at it. And what did you think? Were you apprehensive? Were you nervous? Were you like, no, I'm just going to try this and see what happens? Because back then you probably haven't got all the, the sales tools that we had. Now, I remember the first mobile phone you ever brought home. It was like a brick. It was, you carried it. So we didn't have all the tools that we have now. So what was sales like in the 80s? Tell me, come on, share it. For it's, most of the business, were, or, or all of the business was run down person to person. Yeah. And getting on the same wavelength as the person you were, trying to sell something to, I found early days to be critical, you know, and it gave me so much success in as much as the people I was selling to, I enjoyed selling to them. And, and just to, obviously for the guys on uh, on the watching the video, you were a sales, uh, obviously salesperson, then a sales manager and um, sales director for a security company. So I won't know the name of the security company, but it was a well-known um, security company, wasn't it, that would it was, was well known in the UK for what it did from a security perspective. Yes, uh, I started as a salesperson in South Wales and then I was made manager, sales manager in Wales, South Wales. And then I was promoted to the, the southwest of England, which took me in all places from Devon and Cornwall. And then I set up a sales team in each of these areas, you know. Yeah, and, and when you, you know, when you obviously um, we're in as a sales role. You mentioned about how you got, you know, what are you? There's so many things I'm going to share at the end, things that you taught me um, about sales, and that's why I've loved sales as a passion. But what were you, what were the key things you realized quite early on? You, you weren't given any training, were you, for sales? You weren't given there any. Was very little training. I think I had a day or two 
out with a salesperson from a different area, no more than two to three days, and then I had my first uh, potential customer to go at, you know. And, and what were you? What were? You, how were you told to approach it? What, I mean, what was the approach they told you? To, how did they say to, to go and make it happen? What, what, what did they say? They said to me, "Go and sell." I had no advice on how to do it, but you learn quickly. And you say you learn quickly. What, 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 what were the key factors that helped you learn quickly? Well, one of the key factors was uh, my commission was based on uh, <laughs> me earning and earning sales, and. Uh, you do learn quickly. I, if you don't sell, you don't get paid, basically. Precisely. And I guess you, at the time, I was the youngest. You had a young family of, what, you know, three kids under ten. Yes. Um, you had, you know, you just moved to a new area, a new house, and whatever else. So I guess there was big commitments, really, to, to yeah, go ahead. Yeah, big commitments. And once the ball started rolling, if you like, it became more enjoyable as it went on because I gained experience. And I come to realise what the customer wanted and what I had to do to make that customer want my product. And what, and what, you know, what, you know, so obviously, you know, I believe, uh, as you know, in the work I do, that, that I work with lots of different companies and lots of different industries. And I always say to people that the fundamentals of sales are, are not massively different depending on industry. What, what were the things that you've always found that, you know, when you started that, that made the difference in, 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 in winning business? I think one of the main things is to get on the same wavelength as the customer. Or well, the prospect, I guess, the person you're yeah, selling to. The yeah. prospect, yes. The thing is, the prospect comes to you and comes to the market because he has a problem. Yep. And by coming to the market with a problem, you have to understand the problem and then, of course, try and put the problem right for him. That's great. I mean, again, and if anyone worth watching this, you'll, you'll be you'll be thinking, why the hell does James talk about the words that he does? And I talk about it in in, in, in my sales in lots of the videos. Yes. I talk about five key words of sales. The first two words being problem or want. I always say people have a want. You have a problem, but also the want to do something and be different is, is a good example. But the other key thing I say to people is you have to understand them, totally. um, and you have to understand them. And what are the thing you know? And I know this is, I'm not setting this up. But what are the what are the what are the ways that you used to use to understand your prospects? Well, my first meeting, I used to understand them as a person. The second meeting used to be to understand their problem. Mm -hmm. And the third then, to produce a solution for their problem. It's really interesting you say that, actually, Dad, as well, because what you're saying there is that, and, and I get see a lot of people that get this really badly wrong, where they go and try and sell too early, too quickly. If you'd have been in that position in those first meetings where you try to solve, you know, did you make that mistake? I mean, and if so, you know, did you, you learn quickly that those first meetings are about understanding who they are before trying to sell to someone, isn't it? Oh, totally. Uh, I didn't make that mistake simply because I didn't, I possibly I wasn't forceful enough as a salesperson, but my initial was getting to know the person for the first 10 minutes, quarter an hour, and then getting to know his problem and then providing the solution. Yeah, and, and and obviously in those you know methods about getting to know someone and building you know that rapport, I talk a lot about it in my videos about how you've got to. It's number four in my sales is like dating model to be able to, to get to. You can you can't win a piece of business on the first time you meet someone, but you can lose it. What were the things that you found that were great ways to get people on your side in those meetings or to get them to, to want to continue to have a conversation with you? Once you got to know them, getting to understand what their problem was. Each of them had a problem and they only had so much finance in their pocket to understand and solve the problem. So you look at what it is, and I, I'm selling security, don't forget, close circuit television, alarm systems, things to that order. Yeah. So I, I would un get to understand uh, what he's trying to protect and come with a solution. And I guess when you're trying to understand what people are trying to protect, that also meant what, what was, you know, one of the things that I talk to people a lot about is that about how people, um, you have to sell to people's emotions rather than the physical. The head, the head buys, but the main thing is the heart is also the key factor. And I guess when you're selling and protecting things, they don't want to lose those properties, do they? They don't want to lose those heirlooms or those things they've got. And I guess that was that a fact, you know, a method you used to understand how those things meant something to them. Oh yes, most certainly. 
Uh, some of the people I met with them uh, towards the end were lords, ladies, pop stars, MPs, all across the board, you know, and they all had different problems. So by looking at their problem, getting to know them, looking at their problem, you could provide a solution. And how did you know when the right time was to be able to talk about the solution? Because one of the other things that I say that I see a lot of salespeople do is they talk about themselves. And I always say it's not about you, it's about the prospect and their... But, but there is a time when you've got to be able to make that, that link, that bridge between where they're at and, and where they want to be. How did, how did you know when that the right time was? Uh, you, you understood their problem, you provided the solution for it. And, when it, and this is always a crucial matter in sales, how much is it going to cost me? Okay. How much, and unfortunately, or fortunately, I think you took a look at it, uh, we weren't the cheapest of companies. Okay, interesting. In fact, we were the most expensive, one of the most expensive companies. So, so that's a really interesting question. And again, a lot of people, again, I speak with have that same challenge that they say a lot of people are, are more expensive than that. How did you deal with that? How did you cope with that element of someone being able to, you know, price is always a biggest objection that a lot of people bring up. So what did you, you know, what tactics do you use to be able to try and overcome that? Uh, we put it straight forward to the customer that it uh, um, was never going to be the cheapest when I put the price together, you know? Yeah. But I would always really, uh, what I give him would be the best that I could provide to solve his problem. Okay. And once you get on the same wavelength as customers, the second time he comes to you, or the third time he comes to you, I've quite often had it where he said, uh, where they've said, well, Joe Bloggs is this price, Fred is this price, you're higher than them, what can you do? Mm -hmm. And I used to say, well, I'll take a bit here, a bit there, and I'll land in the middle. And he used to say, the job's yours. Okay. So you did, in, you know, so one of the things I try not to encourage, it's funny actually, ironically, back in the 80s, maybe things are slightly different. I try not to, I try to get people to try and sell for the maximum price they can rather than discount. But I guess sometimes um, you've got to be a little bit flexible. Maybe you adjust your prices up in the first place to then take advantage of the fact that, um, that, that someone's going to knock you down maybe. And that's another way of doing it, isn't it? I guess is to maybe offer a slightly higher price initially to, to then get the price that you want. But um, Yeah, but... People are different. If I was dealing with a, a stately home, the price would be the way you worked would be slightly different. They would, if you're dealing with a pop star who's worried about people coming into his house and things like that, you take it slightly different. But uh, it's amazing how far you can go once you start to know a person. You know? Yeah, and, and, and that knowledge about building relationships and engaging with someone is also another key factor that I say to people a way to actually overcome that price objection because even though people um, will you know they will want the best deal and the best price they also want to build it and, and do business with someone they like and the reputation they have and, and were you ever in situations where as a result of your relationship you were able to, to demand that extra price because they were buying from you not just from the company and, and from the for, you know for, from a product's perspective yes uh, I was I could put my price and they could say, well, you're way out compared to your competition. And I could say, well, are they providing this and this and the other? And if they would come back to me and say, no, they're not. And he used to go into the problem when he would talk it through his friends, if you like, in the end. Mm -hmm. And once you talk something through with, with somebody that you get on with and they get on with, you can easily solve the problem. Yeah, okay, cool. So. So you obviously spent, you know, what, what was the things that, you know, when, can you remember your first commission check when you had a, you know, when you, when you, the, the first sale and, and the value of what you got and yes. how did it make you feel when you saw that extra money and thought, I've made this happen? I was surprised in some respects. I thought it would have taken longer to arrive at that position, you know. And how long were you, you know, from when you first started in sales without any training, how long, um, were you in a position before you got your first commission check then? Uh, one month. One month? Wow, so you learned pretty quickly then. To be able to... One, one month. It wasn't a particularly big commission check, but as the month went by, it increased and there was a lot easier to do what I was doing. 
So one of the other things that I remember growing up when um, when I used to you know sit in your car and, and learn to try and drive on the roads and stuff is that you used to have a selection of tapes. You were always massively focused on learning, um, and I remember I helped you with some stuff around Excel in the early days as well. And you were always trying to innovate and learn. And you used to have these tapes from Jim Rohn. Do you remember the Jim Rohn tapes yeah, you used to have? Really Where did, how did you get into that sort of stuff and learning about self development and trying to better yourself? Because I. It is so important for anyone in sales is how can you learn a new technique or learn a new style, a new way of working, something that can enable you to get a better result. How did you get into that stuff? Well, when you don't have much sales training, you look about you to see what is there to assist you. Yeah. And you go on to the expertise of people and you might try one of their ways. It might work for you, it might not, but you try it, and if it works for you, that's great, you know. You learn as you go along. Yeah, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed a lot of listening to these tapes as I trolled around the area, and it did me the world of good. Yeah, and, and, and you know, did you, obviously when you went, went to build a sales team, yeah, how did you find your team? Did you have some that accepted that and understood that they, it was in their interest to go and create, sorry, to, to go and you know, learn, or what, about what, was the, what was the mentality of the, a lot of your, kind of remember a lot of your sales guys you had, and ladies you had, there was some really great people. What was, you had a mixed team there, didn't you? How was their mentality to learn and pick up some new stuff? And were they open to that? Yes, they realized I was a salesperson like them until I got promoted, and they realized, how oh, I realized that the problems they were having was the same problems I used to have when I first came into sales and we used to uh, most certainly pair up on jobs to begin with and uh, the sales they would talk to the customer and I would ship in. Uh, you know we're just like a, uh, a friendly group gathering and we'd look at the problem and we'd learn from what the customer wanted and then we invested the solution, if you like. Yeah, no, sure, and sure. And I guess, you know, for your, for the guys you had, how many people did you end up at? What was the maximum number of salespeople you had in your team? Oh, at the end? around about 30, 40 in the end, because I used to cover such a large area of the country. Yeah, and how did you, you know, how, how, how did you, you know, what were the, what were the things you did to try and manage the, I remember, you, you know, I remember working you know, years ago, the, the stories, I won't say the names of, of of guys in your team where you'd say to me, oh, so-and-so and so-and-so has -so -so been a silly bugger today and they've done this and they've done that. And, you know, it's sort of like, it's sort of like having 40 other kids, I guess, really, wasn't it? In terms of, you know, trying to look after these guys and help them achieve what they wanted to, which would in turn help you. We all have problems and I was, you know, understanding that they all have problems. Uh, we'd look at solutions and then they do the wrong thing. But we all do that, you know? Mm. But they learn quickly. They had to learn quickly because they needed commission like I did. Yeah, yeah. And look, at you, when you look at sales now, Dad, and you think about, like, you know, obviously you know I love sales, I'm in sales and I help people with it. And, um, you know, how do you think sales has changed over the years in, since sort of when you did it to sort of now? The main, one of the main re reasons people want to close the sale so quickly. Yeah. With the result that uh, it puts me off because somebody's trying to close me before I really know what they can do for me, what their product is right. Yeah. I think you need, or I, I need time to see what the problem was before I want to provide the solution. It's not like that these days, not yeah. in some aspects. Yeah, so you think people are too pushy to you know to, to get an answer because they don't want to wait and it's, it's actually a really again important point that I talk to people a lot about which is length of sales cycle so I say to people their sales cycle is a lot longer you know the sales cycle can be um, in my case for example in, as you know in my business and working with clients I would say to them, my sales cycle is three to four months you know someone might not hear me hear from me or and, and know who I am um, and it will take me sometimes it can take less time but it can take sometimes three to four months for that person to think, yeah, I want to help. I want James to help me get better, better sales results. So, is that something you feel a lot of people nowadays don't do? They try and push for the sale too early, and then they, yeah, but yeah. then they waste some time. You see, because you push your sales, then you lose a sale. Whereas if you took a little bit more time and a bit, a bit more prospecting, you could gain the sale that you would have lost. 
Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. And that, that, that's important. And what are some of the key, you know, so some of the, you know, I'll talk a little bit about some of the four things that I think you taught me. But what are some of the key things, that, you know, if I said to you, what are the, someone said to you that, you know, I'm not your son, but someone said to you, you know, I'm interested in going into sales, what would you tell them are the, are the top, you know, two or three things to, top three things, say, to, to focus on and, and if they want to have a career in sales? Focus on personal relationships with every customer and not personal, I don't mean it that way. <laughs> you don't want to go that route, no, sure. Uh, but get to know the person, get yep. to know his problem. Or she. Uh, or her problem, and then you can go about uh, solving it. Rather than pushing it forward too quickly, sit and wait a couple of minutes before you come to a conclusion. Okay, okay, so that's point number one. What else would you say? Depends on the situation. The situation is going to change depending on what type of uh, protection we were given. You know, it's, in some cases it was closer to television, and the cases with alarm systems. But initially, I could sell somebody an alarm system, and he said, and he used to come back and say, I feel secure now, and I said, You are. I'm just going to the next customer to sell some television. And they used to say, oh, would that be any good for our business as well? So you try and tell them the alternatives. Or the other options, basically. Or the other options, because it can be quite complicated. They only see their problem. And that's, so that's a really good point about sales, actually. And I know you'll come on to maybe the third point, but the job of a salesperson, a really good salesperson, is to is to is to focus on um, educating as well. Educating sounds like the wrong word, but being able to share value to give. I always talk to everyone I work with about how you have to give value. You have to make people think, "Wow, I didn't know that," or "Wow, that looks interesting," or "Geez, tell me more about that. What's this?" And, and what does that do? And if you add value and you educate and you help and you support people, you build those relationships with them, and therefore. They see you as a confident. They see you as someone that they want to, that is going to help make their world a better place. Totally. Once they, once you've developed that relationship, it, sales becomes easier in your area mm. because uh, you one or two customers a month uh, might be reoccurring customers. So once you start getting reoccurring customers, that is good mm. because you know you're halfway there. You don't have to do a lot of the things apart from making sure that a customer is happy from what he's getting. Yeah, and, and that's actually you know, talking about a really important point around customers being happy. It's so important, isn't it, to make sure even once you've done and installed a, and had a sale, a lot of salespeople give up and think their job stops there rather than to focus on making sure that client's happy. No, you can't do that. You must, once you've had your sale, you've had your commission, you then call in to see the customer in the next in the area, talk about how he's getting on, whether his problem has changed, whether what he's got makes him happy. Mm. You can it may be not an order. I just go and see people two or three, four, five, six, seven times, not talking about sales, but just talking about their problems. Yeah, and understand them and get to know them and become that confident so they yeah. can work with you basically. Yeah. I know I guess maybe one of the other third points that you'll talk about, which I know you've always to, you know talk to me about it. it's about mindset and about your mindset as a salesperson you know you your mindset as a salesperson and it still is in life now is an incredibly positive one and I guess that would that be your third other thing to anyone thinking of going into sales and, and that's to, to just make sure you alter the alter the mindset yeah it is important the moment you think oh I can't do this or I'm not going to sell here that you've lost You've got to program the big computer on your shoulders to understand that you can do something, that you can win a situation. It's just approaching it in the right way and talking to the customer in the right the section. The prospect. And the prospect in the right way, you know? Yeah, yeah. But there's nothing, I believe, I may call me silly really, I believe there is nothing you can't achieve if you put your mind to it. If you program your mind to achieve in a sale, you'll do it. You might lose it on the first go, but you learn from that and move onwards with it. Yeah, and it's such a great point, and I know we've sort of come into towards the end of this sort of you know, video, and 
and uh, it's been great. I love, I love, you know, I, I've heard a lot of these stories over the years, but it's hopefully useful for other people to hear them. I guess there's three or four things that I think, you know, and I always say to people, you know, my greatest ever teacher in sales was you because you were in sales and you made me understand the elements around it. And you always talked about programming the big computer upstairs to, to do things. You know, you, you also told me, and you know, you, you probably share with, um, agree, you know, are you, you were very keen for me to get out and be working from a very young age. And you've always said that um, hard work gets you results. And I guess that's another key factor when it comes to sales, isn't it? People think they can sometimes get, like what we said earlier on, results without putting the effort and time in. And it doesn't happen. You've got to put hard work in. You've got to commit effort and time um, to making the calls or, the, or visiting people or make, dropping the emails in a modern era and now or engaging with people to get results. Oh well, yeah, that's true. What you used to come with me on exhibitions and stuff like that. And it used to be about 11 or 12. And I used to say, I'm going to let them in the toilet. Man, stand. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And when I came back, you used to be talking to customers. Yeah, yeah, just talking to someone and trying to understand a bit more where they were going. They, they felt sorry for me. They were wondering what I was going to get paid. <laughs> this is true, but uh, it makes you learn at that age. Well, people will talk to me. People will understand these things, you know. Yeah, I guess the other thing that you know you also taught me at a really young age and an early age was about actually you know this idea of mutual wins. You know, the customer wins, you win. Um, and again, it's a thing that a lot of salespeople don't focus on either. They focus on what's right for them and winning themselves without. And if they get the sale and the money comes in, that's great. But you know, you were very clear to me that the, the best sales happen when both sides win. Totally. It's not only. Happens when both sides win. It means you get another order, maybe in a year's time, or you get another order in six months' time. But it's actually going to the customer and understanding his problem and putting time and effort to it, and it brings the results. And it's quite, it's quite nice when you're looking at your commission check. There's big figures on it, yeah. you know. And I guess doing it in in a, in a way with a smile, because I guess that's the other thing you always used to say to me, you know. You do it with a smile on your face. You you literally, if you enjoy this and you want to do it and you want to be successful, then you you focus on smiling and and and, yeah. and, and, and having results in, from a smiling perspective, isn't it? It's, that's the key factor that makes you know people want to do people business with other people they like and that they feel are happy people. Totally, totally. It's like that quite often. They might have had a bad morning when you arrive. You know, once you sense that, you can work your way through it and make them understand that uh, you're not going to add to their, their problems, if you like, you're there to solve their problems. Yeah, well, that's brilliant. I mean, I think the fact that you've, you've probably used the word problem about 50 times, but I think it's so important because it's one of the things, that, again, I go back to what I said, it's the key reason why people buy. People don't buy because uh, people buy only for two reasons, and I say this to people all the time, because of the problem or one. And if you can't identify those one of those two things, it becomes, makes sales really hard work. So. Look, we, we've got to um, where we needed to be, um, Dad, so thank you. It's, a good to, it's always nice to spend time with you in the car, talking through stuff and sales related things. I know it's been a few years since you've been retired from sales yeah. now, but um, you know, don't fancy a, a, another go at sales anymore, no? I, I'm, the job I'm doing now, as soon as I arrive on the premises, I sell myself. And that makes the day so much easier for the customer and me. Mm, exactly, but great stuff. Thanks, Pop. Great conversation, loved it. Um, so there was it, that was it. That was um, sales from conversations from sales experts. Um, my dad, the guy that taught me everything on what I was, taught me a, a huge amount of things on how to sell and how to build great relationships. So um, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and it's been interesting and useful for you. Um, if you're a sales professional and you think, hey, I could sit in the car with James and, and talk about sales success, um, then I'd love to hear from you. Get in contact with me and uh, let's let's do the session with yourself. And um, yeah, I, I hope you've enjoyed watching, hope you've enjoyed the video, that it's given you some insights and some ideas on how um, other people get sales results. Sales isn't complex, it's about how we approach relationships, engage in the right way, with the right mindset, and we can get what we want. So that's it from me, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, more to follow on another Sales Conversations with Sales Experts really soon.